What's up, A to Z Sports Live on a Wednesday. Thanks for everybody for joining here live. Austin Stanley and Sam Phelan live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch talking Titans today. We talked about one trade option yesterday with the Titans potentially finding a way to go after Panthers wide receiver DJ Moore in a fire sale of the Panthers roster. Uh, also talked a lot about Robbie Anderson some. Sam, you broke down DJ Moore's contract situation for potential trade on A to Z sports.com. Uh, so we'll actually bring another potentially more realistic trade option for the Titans uh, with an Eagles offensive lineman and a familiar trade partner for John Robinson after they dealt uh, this past April with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tennessee Titans. And then we'll dive into a topic we've been holding on to uh, for the last couple of days about Caleb Farley. Sam, you wrote earlier in the week about the Titans being in a lose-lose situation with first-round pick Caleb Farley. So we'll dive into that. You've got some video from Titans assistant coaches that will play about this lose-lose situation for the Titans. And it's Wednesday, which means throw in shade. Throw in shade today on a uh, Wednesday. Shrike says, Austin, uh, the toaster misinformation. Stanley, back for one more day. I did go on the Titan Up podcast in a pinch. Uh, yesterday afternoon, and I was lied to when it when it comes to the toaster. So maybe that could be part of my shade uh, later on today. I'll decide decide that. But Shrike has already gotten deep into the Tighten Up podcast by you know the time the morning show started today. So uh, good job there. But Sam, welcome in. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Yeah, let's get it going. And before we do get it going, everybody out there watching, go ahead and share the show before we get started. That's a YouTube link. That's a retweet on our Twitter. That is a quick share for all of your Facebook friends. If you're watching on Facebook Live right now, it's one click of a button. Make sure you do that. And if you're on YouTube as well, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have these videos that Austin mentioned of Titans assistant coaches, Titans players, all of these videos and highlights of practice coming out basically on a daily basis once we're not during a bye week. Make sure you're subscribed to get all of that. But most importantly, share the show today to get as many Titans fans involved in this conversation let's get it going yep let's do it officially welcome into a to z sports powered as always by the bet mgm app i'm austin stanley he is sam phelan in for zach bingham <clears throat> excuse me again today uh make sure you follow us all over nash all over social media because we are nationals on demand sports network and we go live every weekday morning at eight central time on facebook youtube and twitch find links to the show on our twitter timeline also <clears throat> on our instagram and hit us up on tiktok as well, we got to thank our sponsors because they make it happen for us and they help out you guys with Wilson County Hyundai. Make them a part of your new car buying process or see them at wilsoncountyhyundai.com in Lebanon. <clears throat> the Bone and Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Get better uh, with Farm Bureau health plans as well. Better coverage rates and service, fbhp.com slash ATOZ, and Hughes and Coleman, Hughes and Coleman Injury Lawyers, the official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. If you've been injured in a car wreck, check them out today at 800-800-4600. So uh, th- before we dive into this, Sam, uh, this trade possibility for the Titans, it might be more realistic uh, than the DJ Moore trade that we talked about yesterday. But I do want to go on record before we bring up this other trade option. I am still on board with trading for DJ Moore by John Robinson and the Tennessee Titans. I still think uh, that would be a beneficial move for the Titans long-term and short-term. Do you still feel the same way? And and if you can, quickly do a run-through of the contract breakdown that you had on A2ZSports.com once you uh, had that pulled up about what the Titans would have to pay DJ Moore if they traded, and then I want to hear where you, where you still stand on the DJ Moore option. No, yeah, I'm I'm absolutely where I was yesterday. We mentioned we we had a conversation yesterday and how realistic I thought the trade was. I was kind of more in the unrealistic cat category where you were this very realistic, and that came down to competition for me. It doesn't come down to the player DJ Moore is, or really the salary cap or. Uh, the salary of DJ Moore. I think he is everything the Titans need. It is a very beneficial trade. And if you read my article on A to Z sports.com, how realistic it can be for them monetarily. So DJ Moore 
Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the NFL cap situation, we kind of teased it a little bit during yesterday's show. A team, when you trade for a player, you're obviously responsible for that player's contract for the remainder of his salary, right? If he's got more money on his base salary, you have to pay it. You have to pay base salary in the future. You're not responsible for the segments of that base salary that are already paid by the team. Players get game checks. They get 17 of them. So whatever their yearly salary is, is divided by 17 and they get it after every game. Whatever is left, that's what you have to pay. Then there are bonuses, signing bonuses, workout bonuses that are already paid to players. The signing bonus, while it might go $4 million, $4 million, $4 million, $4 million each year in cap hit, he has that money in his pocket. So after mm-hmm. breaking it down, and you can get the full details on that article, the Titans would owe DJ Moore for the rest of this season, if they traded for him today, $730,000. $730,588. That's all it would go against their cap. So when you talk about, do they have cap space for him? Absolutely they do. And then he does go up and they would owe him a full $20 million and uh, about 16 for the two years after that. But there's money coming off the books. He's heavy in base salary as well, which makes him pretty easy to restructure. Yep. There is no scenario to me in which DJ Moore is a cap hindrance for the Titans he is very easily able to be worked. And uh, I believe Teron mentioned on our show yesterday in the comments that, well, Robert Woods could be coming off the books and all all of these different things. So when I look at DJ Moore and whether or not it's a financial issue, the number I see is $730,000. And the answer to that to me is no. So that's the cap that that's kind of the, the basic explanation of that and like i said more details on that article on the website to kind of give a full breakdown of where that money comes from uh but yeah that is that's the money the titans would owe him yeah and and i think that uh another thing that i'm not worried about is the salary cap health the cap's just going up baby i mean yeah amazon prime tv money is here and the cap is just going to keep on rising as the the tv uh broadcast deals or just broadcast deal. You can't even call them TV broadcast deals anymore. Just the broadcast deals in general will continue to rise the salary cap. And that's just good for the Titans and you know, money coming off the books. There's a lot of guys that are making high salaries that probably won't be uh, on the team next year. Now you have, you know, uh, Jimmy saying, uh, do the Titans get money off the cap for Landry? Yes. When injured players, when players go on injured reserve, they receive only 50% of their uh of their salary that year. Now yep. the thing with Harold Landry is he just got his big contract, so his base salary this year is not that big. So you're not saving at that much on Landry because his signing bonus was massive. And then you have Taylor Lewan who had a big base salary who you save a lot of money on because he's injured. Now you'd probably rather have Taylor Lewan, but that does nicely bring us to this other trade option. They actually might be more realistic than DJ Moore. Now, it's not for as good of a player as DJ Moore, but John Robinson has options. And that other option is Eagles left tackle Andre Dillard. So uh, background on Andre Dillard, he's only started nine games, Sam, in the 31 games that he's played for for Philadelphia. He is a 2019 first-round pick, ironically the same draft pick that the Titans took Caleb Farley in 22nd overall. Maybe that's just a bad slot. Rashawn Evans went 22nd overall in 2018. Then Andre Dillard went 22nd overall uh, in 2019. Uh, I guess uh, Justin Jefferson went 20 overall in 2020. So that was pretty good. And then you yeah. had Caleb Farley in 2021. That one worked out okay. Yeah, that one worked out all right. So you've got Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard has only put, started nine of 31 games. He's had a weird situation. Now, that sounds bad. Uh, at his second year in the league in 2020, he missed the entire season with a torn bicep. So injury cost him no big deal. They did not pick up his fifth-year option because last year, in year three for Andre Dillard, he lost the starting job at left tackle to another player. And then going through camp this year, you thought he would regain regain that starting left tackle job. He did not. He lost it to the same guy. And he also broke his forearm. Now the Eagles just activated him 
off of injured reserve uh, last week because of the broken forearm. And there's been rumblings about Andre Dillard on the trade market for a while. Uh, over, I, I saw back dating into June of people talking about the Eagles potentially trading Andre Dillard. And Ronnie asked, why would the Eagles trade away Andre Dillard? So Sam, do you have a thought on Ronnie's question? Well, yeah, I mean, the answer is what you said. He's lost his starting job, and being a 2019 draft pick, he they have declined his fifth-year option. He's an expiring contract. He's not making an impact for them on the field. Uh, so if you're the Eagles right now, and this is not somebody that you are playing every day, it would make sense to at least listen to offers to see what kind of draft capital you could get back for him. If you can turn a guy that's not playing in an expiring deal – into a, I don't know, future third round pick, whatever it would cost, uh, that's a worthwhile conversation to have. So it, it makes sense for Philadelphia. Just because they're a contending team doesn't mean they can't trade players away. If, if it's not somebody that they view essential to their success and somebody that they've been without for a while now, if the price is right for them. Right. And so Andre says, so wait, Austin is campaigning for a guy who gets hurt and beat out more than once. Like, I don't know if I'm campaigning, uh, I have not, uh, I don't think I've started my campaign for, for Andre Dillard yet, but uh, you know, Eric asks, is Andre Dillard any good? Uh, I think he's a lot better than Dennis Daly and that's the situation. And so I'm not campaigning for Andre Dillard. The title of the show is this might be a more realistic trade than DJ Moore. And the reason why is I saw with Buck rising who does our A to Z sports Instagram Tuesday questions every week. He was asked about Andre Dillard uh, yesterday on the A to Z Instagram questions. So I, I texted Buck and asked more. I basically just flat out asked, asked Buck, is Andre Dillard a more legit trade option than DJ Moore? And Buck said 100%, yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out how the Titans can improve their roster over this bye week before the trade deadline that it is November 1st. And I think I would, you know, DJ Moore is a, long-term thing or DJ Moore, you would have him for four seasons and pay him roughly $50 million over the four seasons and only 70 K of it this year. Andre Dillard is a fix right now type of option with his expiring contract after the year and a chance to maybe if it works out well, negotiate, here's a best case scenario for Andre Dillard. You trade for him. You don't have to give up as, as, as expensive of capital as you would for uh, DJ Moore. He works out as your left tackle in place of Lawan. Dennis Daly is now a backup for you to create more depth. Then you get the first right of negotiation with Andre Dillard on the expiring contract to see if he can replace Taylor Lawan full time. Now you've got a talented guy who's played a couple of years to potentially replace Lawan for a lot cheaper than what Lawan would be in 2023. That's that's the best case scenario for Andre Dillard, Sam. Yeah, and I, like it all comes down to how realistic some of these things are. And one of my points yesterday that I still stand by today is the philosophical issue that I think the Titans could have with trading a first round pick for DJ Moore. I'm still adamant that it will cost a first. Um, and they just used one of those picks on Traylon Burks last year. And for a Mike Vrabel, John Robinson team that has kind of made their identity off playing defense, having a, a strong front and running the football. I don't see them using two straight years of first round draft capital on two wide receivers. I could see them going out of their way to try and bring in a left tackle. And I think it's important to keep in mind, Austin, Starting left tackles are not available on the trade. Market. No, like, no. like going into a trade deadline with, oh, we have a left tackle issue is a problem that is hard <laughs> to fix because the good ones aren't going anywhere. So when, when you look at, okay, well, we need help fixing the offensive line. It probably looks similar to Andre Dillard or Andre Dillard caliber of somebody that, you know, has high potential that you're trying to get the most out of that you're thinking, well, maybe with an opportunity to play, they can take the next step, and maybe they're just better than what we have at the moment. That is the mindset that Titans fans and the Titans need to have going into a trade deadline with a couple different holes. Star wide receivers 
can be traded for. That happens all the time. Left tackles are a corner piece of every offense, and the good ones are usually on good teams. They're not going anywhere. So uh, Dillard is a realistic option to me if they are looking for somebody else not named Dennis Daly, uh, which uh, I think they have to be given his recent performance. You at least have to start spinning the wheels on what another external option would be. Absolutely. A to Z Sports here live on this Wednesday. Sam Thalen in for Zach. Zach is back tomorrow, but I am not. So this is my Friday. So happy Friday to me. Uh, But let's ask everybody this question. Would you rather the Titans trade for left tackle Andre Dillard or wide receiver DJ Moore? Would you rather the Titans trade for Andre Dillard or DJ Moore? I'm curious about what people think. Now, I know the fans aren't responsible for Amy Adams Strunk's money. So, you know, the money is not an option to them. But would you rather do uh, the expensive wide receiver in DJ Moore or the very affordable option of Andre Dillard. Uh, Let me tell you guys all about our great sponsor, Hughes and Coleman. They're the official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans, and they can be your official injury lawyer if you've been injured in a car wreck uh, because they will go to bat. They will battle and fight against the insurance company for you, just like they have all their clients over their tenure. Uh, And they've recovered over $1 billion for their clients across the state of Tennessee and in Kentucky. Again, they'll go get you what you deserve for being injured in a car wreck. So call them today if you've been injured in a car wreck or ever. Unfortunately, if you've been injured in a car wreck at 800-800-4600. That's 800-800-4600. Hughes and Coleman Injury Lawyers, the official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans, principal office in Nashville, Tennessee. Today's show is powered by BetMGM, the king of sports books. And if you go to BetMGM.com or the BetMGM app and use promo code A-T-O-Z sports in the app, you can get a risk-free bet on pro football up to $1,000. Whatever game it is that you want to pick, make sure you're using the promo code because whatever dollar amount it is, I don't unit shame. It can be $2, it can be $10, it can be $100, up to $1,000. That bet is risk-free. You get a second chance at it. So use the promo code. That's A-T-O-Z sports at betmgm.com and the betmgm app. All right, Sam, who would you rather the Titans trade for? Andre Dillard or DJ Moore? My internet's being funky. My computer's having to work hard. So my comments are are, uh, hard to read. So I'll send you to the comment section. Dillard or Moore, who would you rather the Titans trade for? Michael is saying more all the way. Danny is saying left tackle, no question. DJ Moore by a mile. DJ Moore. More from Xavier. John says left tackle. Uh, Michael says move Raiden's to left tackle. They don't need the left tackle. Zoe's on DJ Moore. Caleb's on DJ Moore. Guy says get the left tackle. Uh, Top tier says DJ Moore. Justin says DJ Moore. Uh, Steven says Dillard. Now, now, now. (laughs) Eric says Dillard. Uh, The other Eric says DJ Moore. Tighten up says DJ Moore. Brock Kraft watching on Twitch says Dillard. Uh, Tannehill has no time to get the ball out right now. Another wide receiver doesn't help with that. And Jacoby tends to agree saying left tackle a little bit more split than I think I expected it to be Austin here. There's a lot of uh, Titans Kyle's on Dillard. Uh, We got uh, Laurent's on O-line hot doobie says DJ Moore kind of 50, 50 in the chat. Uh, Oh, is it a player thing with DJ Moore? Is it a positional thing with go get the left tackle? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the, what's the deal with you? Where are you at with this thing? Yeah, that's, that's why I think it's a good question is because a lesser player for the probably more important position at the moment at left tackle. And then the super expensive after this year player in DJ Moore at a uh, wide receiver. Uh, Nick says both. <laughs> so why not both? I mean, Financially, you could do it because Andre Dillard is only making a base salary of two point one million dollars. He's already well. He actually has not been well. Uh, he's been on injured reserve, so it's still you would owe him uh, what twelve game checks uh, over the Titans for the Titans there too. So it's not going to be that expensive. You could afford both under the cap this year and be fine. Andre Dillard expiring contract uh, where DJ Moore's got fifty million dollars of base salary. Of in the three years after this one, Sam, I'm still going with DJ Moore. 
I, I think, again, I said it yesterday, John Robinson has a mulligan opportunity that doesn't come around that often. Some people, and I saw this on social media in reaction to our show yesterday, that some people out there that are Titans fans believe that DJ Moore could be better than AJ Brown. I'm not one of those people. I think AJ Brown's better than DJ Moore, but DJ Moore is still really good. And if you have a wide receiver trio of DJ Moore, Robert Woods, and rookie Traylon Burks after he comes back from toe, from turf toe, I really like what you got there. Now, Derrick Henry doesn't run into as many eight men boxes because you've got extra weapons who can legitimately be threats outside. And you've got a polished wide receiver who is more explosive than Robert Woods. Robert Woods, very polished, but not as explosive as DJ Moore. And then you've got the explosivity of Traylon Burks that can come back and beat you yards after the catch or just be physical and do all those things that Burks can do. I, I go with DJ Moore over Andre Dillard. Yes, Andre Dillard might be better than Dennis Daly by a, wa- by a lot, but I just don't think you can pass up on an option like DJ Moore to fix your mistake that you had in April. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I'm on the DJ Moore train, and, wow. and it and it becomes even knowing the price that it would take, and the reason why that I keep coming back to is I don't know what Andre Dillard is. I don't know that he's better than Dennis Daly. I don't know if Philadelphia knows, and he hasn't played in a long time. They benched him, but Jordan Mailata is a very, very good uh, left tackle for them. I don't. I haven't seen it. He hasn't been on the field. He's been injured. He's been a backup. I don't want to go out and make an acquisition and feel like the Titans are fixing a hole and filling a hole on a guy that I don't know if he's an upgrade. I know what DJ Moore is and what he brings to the table. I know that he is, in my opinion, better than AJ Brown because of his production, because of the offense that he works in, because he's multifaceted and can do it all on a football field, then I know what he brings to their offense immediately Mm -hmm. and will continue to bring in the future. It's an expiring contract. It's a guy that hasn't played football very often recently. He's dealt with the injuries. I I don't know if he's an upgrade. I can't be out there and and be, you know, rooting for Andre Dillard. I, I, I think it's a smart trade. I think it's a trade that couldn't hurt them but I don't know if it helps them. And as long as I have that feeling, you have to go with DJ Moore. He's the better player. He's a game-changing player. And the Titans need more of those. They don't have enough of those, especially on offense. It's Derrick Henry and who else in terms of who can change a game for them with the ball in their hands. DJ Moore is one of those guys in the National Football League, and he's proven to be that guy for three years. That has to be the answer to me. Left tackle is important. And if this would be a way different conversation, if you were talking about a left tackle of a guy of near or around DJ Moore's caliber, I don't think Dillard is that he could be that. I don't, I don't know. And yeah, that's what it comes down to for me. Uh, Yeah. I'm reading up more on, on Andre Dillard. I I just think it's a pro football focus wrote, had a write up on Andre Dillard. This is from August. Uh, because the Eagles were receiving a lot of uh, calls uh, for for Andre Dillard. And this was a report from Jeff McClain saying quite a few teams are in the mix and have already expressed interest in the 25-year-old offensive tackle. But here's what Pro Football Focus says about Dillard. Dillard represents a worthy gamble in a league where quality tackle play is difficult to come by. Uh, he has one of the steepest learning curves of any position as players continue to develop and improve into their fourth year uh, because of where he played at Washington State, right? The super pass-heavy, spread-it-out type of offense. Uh, PFF continues, Dillard is a relatively unknown with 338 offensive snaps in his first two seasons. He could offer value and upside to teams who are looking to add tackle depth at a pressed price uh, given his recent injury. So the price would be somewhat cheap on yeah. Andre Dillard, but it is a gamble. And the price was cheap on Dennis Daly, and that was for depth. Then Lawan goes down. Now you don't have any depth. Because all the people saying that put Dylan Radins at left tackle, 
They tried that. They tried to play Dylan Radins at tackle all training camp, and he failed. Dylan Radins is a failed tackle who has better upside at guard. I'd rather Dylan Radins try to beat out Aaron Brewer at left guard right now than have Dylan Radins try to go back to tackle. Yeah, I mean, you you bring up the word gamble, and that's yeah. a word that I've used to describe the Titans roster a lot this offseason and how John Robinson approached this offseason was he gambled, and he gambled on a lot of his draft picks and a lot of his younger pieces. Uh, it is a gamble. I think it would be a worthwhile gamble. I think it makes sense. I, I think there's no reason not to do it. But in the context of this question, who would you rather the Titans trade for, even knowing the price of DJ Moore, which – is why I think it's unrealistic to expect it. I still think it's worth it. And uh, the Titans have to fix some of these issues going forward. They have too much talent in certain areas of their roster to not try and make the most out of these windows and of these opportunities. You don't do that by gambling to me. Gambling is fine as long as it is uh, complemented by suring, filling a surefire hole. And, and so if I'm like, if I'm given the option of the Titans trade for Andre Dillard and take a gamble, but don't do anything at wide receiver or the Titans get DJ Moore and fix some of the wide receiver core issues they've had, but let Dennis Daly ride it out at left tackle. I'm taking option B because that's just the better player. And I think it makes them a better team uh, for the rest of this year and beyond. Yeah, Titans Fox is awesome. You kept saying uh, tackle for Dylan Radins, but they're saying left tackle instead of right tackle where Dylan Radins failed. Again, I, I, st I still think Dylan Radins was not good enough to win a starting tackle job. Then he's not good enough to win the left tackle job. Like they, They've had opportunities. When Lawan went down in week two, it wasn't Dylan Radins who got the opportunity at left tackle. It was Dennis Daly. And Dennis Daly, you go back and look at his snaps that he took in Carolina the last couple of years. He played a lot of tackle, but he also played a lot of guard. And so they went with Dennis Daly, who was on the roster for like three weeks at that point. They went with him over Dylan Radins. That's what you have to know about Dylan Radins. Listen and watch to what the team is telling you about their players that they have. They didn't go with Radins when they had a chance to do it. And they went with Dennis Daly. And Dennis Daly is not very good. So imagine how they feel about Raiden's at left tackle. Yeah. No, I mean, it. right tackle is usually the place that you put failed left tackles. Uh, so it, it's hard to believe that a guy that didn't win the spot over there and is now finally seeing some success at guard uh, would get moved over to probably the most important and most difficult position on the offensive line to play and left tackle. Uh they liked a lot of what Dylan did at right guard in uh, this past week's game. And I think he has room to grow there. Like you said, Aaron Brewer's job is not uh, necessarily written in stone here as if he continues to struggle with his technique, given his size. Uh, and so you might need Dylan Radins on that front. I don't moving him to left tackle is not a realistic option for them at this point. I don't yeah. think at, at least not mid season. Like if you're going to move him to left tackle, you move him to left tackle after an off season and after a training camp of doing more left tackle work with him, he's been working at guard since basically the end of training camp. You're not going to move him back now and put him as your starter uh, at the most important spot in the O line. Because if you remember, you know, Raiden's worked a lot at left tackle last year in his rookie season, but they went with guys like Bobby Hart over uh, Dylan Raiden. They went with Ty Sam Brilo before he quit and retired over Dylan Radins. The only time they went with Dylan Radins at left tackle was on Thursday night football when both Bobby Hart and Lawan were out for that Thursday night game and they protected the hell out of Dylan Radins that night uh, who played well for the spot he was put in, but the Titans gave him a lot of help. And Deshaun says about Dylan Radins, that's what the Eagles are telling us about Dillard. No, not necessarily because Andre Dillard has been hurt. Like he hasn't played a single snap this year because he had a broken arm at the very beginning of September or the end of training camp. And so, you know, Andre Dillard's been hurt basically two out of his uh, four years fully. Uh, and then even as I was reading up more on Dillard, he went into 
uh, the 2011 training camp where he lost the job and was battling some injuries there, injuries there too. So Dillard upside, it's a gamble. But again, I think we both uh, believe DJ Moore would be the better trade option. Yeah, uh, I do want to get to a comment up here okay. real quick too that said uh, right guard. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, right guard is Davis's spot. Yeah, Nate Davis is your starting right guard when he's on the field. When he was hurt this past week, Dylan was – uh, working at right guard and did a really nice job uh, in terms of what they saw from him. He's finally starting to take a step. I talked to Keith Carter about it, of just making sure he's getting that initial block off the guard spot and staying in front of guys. They they know he has the physical traits to do it. It's just about kind of his technique getting off the line. They were really encouraged with it. My point was Aaron Brewer had a tough day at left guard and is continuing to have tough days. Much of it's because of his size mm-hmm. uh, and it, he needs to be a technician at left guard. And if he's not, then he keeps getting beat. I can see a world where they say, well, Dylan's done a nice job at right guard. And maybe he can do the same thing at left guard because he's still inside. The problem with Raiden's he struggled getting wide when he was at tackle, they were kind of rushing him on the outside and he didn't get all the way wide to get in front of his guy inside. He has help. There's only an, it's a narrower path that he has to try and defend. And he's done a nice job at doing that. I could see them going to left guard with Dylan yeah. Radins and taking Brewer's spot if, if Brewer doesn't uh, fix some of his technique issues. But there's no yeah. question. Nate Davis is the right guard when he's healthy. I just don't think a move to tackle is a realistic expectation for the guy you've been working at guard for the last six weeks. Yeah. Uh, Chad says every play for Aaron Brewer is a fight for his, for his left, for his life. Uh, life. Yeah. For probably. His life. That's how I read it at first. And and yeah, I mean, when you weigh 275 pounds, you're going to get moved off your spot pretty easy. Uh, good technique or not. So Sam and I both go with DJ Moore. And I agree. Maybe Raidens could eventually win the left guard job. I think that would be ideal moving forward. Let's get to our next conversation, Sam, about a lose-lose situation the Titans are currently in with another top draft pick. Uh, Where have you heard that before? But first, let me tell everybody about Wilson County Hyundai. WilsonCountyHyundai.com is where you need to go. Uh, If you're looking for a new ride, new cars, new SUVs, they've got it right there in Lebanon at Wilson County Hyundai. They also have Payne Bone, who's a great guy. And he is not at all what you think about about car dealer guy. Payne's a great dude. He loves sports. He loves the Titans. He loves college football. He likes talking it with everybody uh, as well. He's also a big part of the community as well uh, in Lebanon in the Nashville area. And so he'll do a good job by you and have his crew help you out with finding your next ride. Go check them out again in Lebanon where you're not going to pay the downtown prices. So it's a lot cheaper out there. And then ask for Payne Bone uh, and tell him A to Z sent you in Wilson County Hyundai. We'll hook you up at WilsonCountyHyundai.com. Today's show is powered by BetMGM, the king of sports books. If you're on another sports book, you need to get over to BetMGM. And if for no other reason, because of the promo they've got going with a risk-free $1,000 bet or up to $1,000 bet on pro football with our promo code, that's A-T-O-Z sports on BetMGM. And you can get a risk-free bet up to $1,000 on pro football. So if you've been waiting to get into the sports betting game, now's the time to do so with that promo code. And if you're on another book, Even if you're on that other book, you can still use the promo code, download the app, get involved on BetMGM. That's the way to do it. So BetMGM.com and get the app to use promo code ATOZ Sports for that risk-free bet up to $1,000. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, Tennessee only new customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualifications and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-wageable free bets. Check credit for best expiring seven days. For problem game support, call Tennessee Redline 800-889-9789. Sam, walk us through it. The lose-lose situation the Titans are in. And I know we've got a clip from Anthony Midget uh, coming up as well. But the lose-lose situation uh, set the table for us. Yeah, so the Titans are obviously in a tough spot with Caleb Farley, a first-round draft pick, a guy that they've uh, been wanting to make a, a big emphasis on involving into their defense and into their secondary. He's gotten... A lot of opportunity as well with some of the injuries to Elijah Molden and Ugo Amadi and the way that the Titans have played their defense. And uh, if you've watched the games, you know the issue with Caleb Farley is he has not played well and specifically not played well 
uh, down the field. He's giving up a lot of X plays, a lot of balls over his head. It, it feels like right as he's kind of starting to figure it out and you're like, okay, he's doing pretty well. Boom. They hit a 75 yard touchdown to Diami Brown over his head. Uh, and, and that has hindered him. It has hindered his confidence. We talked about it a little bit in the post game show on Sunday about how his confidence looked like it was paralyzing his athletic ability, according to a tweet from you, Austin. Um, and I think the Titans are in a lose lose with Caleb Farley because it, he is in his head. He has not played well and playing him has proven to be a, a negative for the Titans defense thus far. So if you play him, that's, that's a loss. Uh, and on the flip side of that coin, playing him is what he needs to get better. Playing him is what he needs to stay confident. Uh, and that is the negative or you yank him, do what's best for your defense and potentially not give him an opportunity to get better, hurt his confidence and really put a former first round pick of yours on an island uh, at such a young stage of his career. I talked to Titans uh, assistant coaches and specifically secondary coach Anthony Midget about the issue, about the importance of X plays, about whether or not he thought he had players on a shorter leash when they give up those big plays and how he balances that. Here's what he said about Caleb Farley and the balance the Titans coaches uh, have to think about. How do you balance him being able to learn and get the game reps that he needs versus, you know, can pull him out, wrecking his confidence? Well, it's, the deal is, you know, you're playing in this league, you better have some confidence, you know, playing on the out, you know, on, on the outside. But this is not just with Caleb; it's anybody. If we're not, you know, and it's not Caleb just in itself, but it's just anybody. Like we're not doing the things we, you know, want to get accomplished on the field. You know, we're going to see if the next guy can get it done. But we just got to continue to work and get better and just eliminate these um, explosive plays that we're giving up because we can't continue to do that. You feel like it's. Yep. So there you go. Anthony Midget says, quote, playing in this league, you better have some confidence on the outside. Austin, what are your takes on uh, on the comments from the Titans secondary coach and the Caleb Farley situation? It's it's weird. I mean, like I, I don't know what else Anthony Midget's really gonna say there about it. It's it's the thing where Mike Vrabel can't afford to have a guy lose him a game because he can't do it. Right? He, Mike Vrabel doesn't have time to wait for Caleb Farley to get his confidence back or learn how to play cornerback in the NFL right now. That's the off season. Mike Vrabel's got time to do that in August. He's got time to do that uh, in April when they're back at the facility, and Caleb Farley's got to do all that on his own too away from the facility in the off season right now, Mike Vrabel going to win football games. And so that's where he's at. It's, it's kind of, it's tough because the guy is a good athlete. Like I truly believe if you do a combine or some type of skills test where Titans players have to run, jump, uh, do all these explosive type timing and testing things. Caleb Farley is probably going to be top five, of all the entire roster when it comes to the aggregate results of that skills competition. But something happens with Caleb Farley. Like what I said, said it's his mental is paralyzing his physical where he doesn't know how to, he, he overthinks about flipping his hips and running when he should just run. He's fast. He's good at running, but he's his like gips and his mental block is making him fall down. There's no reason why Caleb Farley should just fall down. And Scott, you nailed it, man. But athlete doesn't mean good player. This is where I, I every once in a while, I pull out this, uh, this analogy. It's everybody that played high school football probably has this guy who works out like a freak. He's a good athlete. He can go out in the backyard and play any type of pick up whatever you, you, you want to do. But if you put pads on him, he doesn't know how to play football. That's kind of what I feel like Caleb Farley is. Caleb Farley is probably great if you put him on the basketball court. He might not have the skills on how to shoot, but he's going to be a good defender. He'll he'll go into the rim, all this kind of stuff, but he doesn't know how to play football. He can play flag football probably great too, but he doesn't know how to play football. And you can't wait for that. It's a tough spot, but yeah, the Titans are in a lose-lose situation because you don't want to ruin 
you don't want to allow the immediate results to ruin a potentially really good player for you. And that's the position the Titans are in right now. Yeah, I mean, defensive back is an instinctive position. Uh, you have to trust yourself. You have to trust those instincts and react to things in, uh, you know, a split second, right? I mean, there there is no time to second guess. There is no time to question your ability. Uh, and that has probably been the difference in Caleb's play so far is now that he is losing a little bit of confidence, I don't think he trusts his instincts quite as much as he should. I don't think he's as reactive and twitchy to the football as he needs to be uh, in order to to be as tight in coverage as he needs to be and NFL wide receivers are dangerous you give them an inch they take a mile uh, and I think that has proven to be the case so far this year because uh, every f- single time I feel like you you second guess something something's in your head they'll expose you for it and he's gotten exposed so far uh, putting them in a, in a tough spot because you don't want to make that worse like you said uh, at this point in his career, but also you got to do what you got to do. So. Yeah, it, it's tough. And somebody, I think Juan said, explain Caleb Farley's college tape. I mean, he was first team all ACC in 2019. That was now three years ago. Yep. It's four seasons ago, 19. He sat out 20. He got hurt. Last year's ACL, he played in three games and now this year. And in between the 2019 all ACC player at corner, he's had multiple back surgeries and an ACL tear. It's just, and that messes with your mind. Like I empathize with your body too. Like your body does take a physical toll from surgeries and those things. But like you said, I mean, it's what they say about basketball players, right? You come back from a torn ACL and all of a sudden a guy like Derrick Rose isn't taken off and, you know, high flying dunking the ball quite as often as he was right before he tore his ACL. There is a mental game to some of that as well. I, and I really do empathize with what Taylor Lewan's going through right now of tearing the same ACL within 24 months. Yep. That sucks. And for Caleb Farley, honestly, it just sucks. Because the guy's got physical traits and ability, but he can't put it together because of some type of mental block. So Sam, let's ask this question about what the Titans should do in this potential lose-lose situation with Caleb Farley. Should the Titans play Caleb Farley or should they bench Caleb Farley? Should they play him or bench him? Because he's a first-round pick, former first-round pick. You don't want to just give up on him. But do you play him or bench him? But first, let me tell everybody about the Bone and Joint Institute. Boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. And if something happens to you or you get hurt, just like Caleb Farley's been hurt a lot in his life, life happens, you fall, you, you get hurt, something goes wrong, you play, pick up sports, and you get dinged up and banged up, especially as you get older, you got to go know, you have to know who to go to and who to trust. That is the folks at the Bone and Joint Institute with specialists who can cover any type of injury you possibly have. Boneandjointtn.org is where to check them out. Today's show is powered by BetMGM, the king of sports books, who are giving uh, everybody with the promo code ATOZ Sports a risk free bet up to $1,000 on pro football. So, Thursday night football, week six coming up. Go get involved and place a bet on BetMGM because they've got the best deal that there is, which is a risk-free bet and a second chance, even if you get it wrong. Uh, That's the promo code A-T-O-Z Sports on the BetMGM app, and you can get a risk-free bet on pro football up to $1,000. All right, play him or bench him. That's the uh, question we're asking about uh, Caleb Farley. Play him or bench him, San. I'll send you the comments. All right, let's see what we got here. We have Steven saying bench Caleb Farley. D Good saying they need to play him. Uh, let's see, we got play. Scott says you can't play him. Jermel says play him. Uh, Eric says give him about 10 snaps a game. Deshaun says let Farley play. Dago says play. NJ Titans fan says play. Steven says play him at safety. Uh, Michael says play him. Valentino says play him. Low man says play him. Uh, 
not going to get better on the bench. So Scoop wants him to play. They're going to play him. That's the Titans way. David wants him on the bench. Uh, I think Caleb Farley is done. That probably means you want him on the bench. Caleb says bench starters are Fulton McCreary and Molden when back. Um, hmm. Titan said Titan Titanium says only play him when you were up, but not in intense moments. Uh, play him when it's a running down bench, the bust from Caleb again, <laughs> bench. He's a liability from Rooney trade him and get what they can from Jeff. Rob, who's going to trade for Caleb Farley. Right they're now. taking the alternate option and just saying, trade him. Uh, let's see. We got another bench here. Amanda says, play him. An interesting response, Austin. Do you want to go first? Should I go first? Where, where I, want, I want to hear you. You've been you've been uh, talking about this Farley situation for a yeah. while, so I'm curious what you think. I have because I do feel pretty str- strongly about it, and I, I know it is. Chris says, bench him, he's trash, and all exclamation points. I just thought that was funny. Uh, I've been pretty adamant about it, and I know I'm probably in the minority when it comes to Titans fans and football minds as a whole. I think you have to play him. I play Caleb Farley. I play him every single down you can, uh, and I live with the consequences. Couple reasons. Number one, he is eight games into his NFL career. Eight games. Probably when you factor in the amount of snaps he's played in those eight games, he's like three games into no, his so, NFL so career. So I, I talked about this yesterday with the Titan Up podcast. Eight games, right? One of them, he tore his ACL in the first half. Yeah. That's one of eight. Then two of eight, yeah. he's been benched. Right. So, I so mean, when you, look, when you look at his body of work, he is so, so, so inexperienced yeah. with, like in, in football. And, and this is a guy you spent a first-round pick on. This is the bed John Robinson and Mike Vrabel made. They have to lie in it. Like, you did this to yourself when you decided to commit to a young secondary, when you used a first-round pick on a guy that had torn his ACL and not played for a year. You knew he hadn't played a lot of football and that he was raw. Okay, you have to actually own up to, commit to that decision and play him. Because if you're using a first-round pick and quitting on a guy after he's played three snaps of football and just saying, Uh, Well, he's not playing well. He can't be on the field for us because it costs us moments in games. That's a bad precedent, right? When you draft a guy, you commit to a guy. Would would you be in favor of the Titans sitting here being like, well, we're going to, you know, trade for DJ Moore and Traylon Burks isn't going to play because we have two better options and he hasn't been great in his first five games. No, of course you wouldn't. But Traylon Burks, Sam, is not a liability for you to lose the game. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that is that's, the, that that that's but the, here's the other option I would tell you. Terrence Mitchell in one of his two starts that he's gotten a lot of opportunities was no better. A- and you have to be willing to commit to the guys that you draft them. That's why you draft them. You have to commit to trying to make them better. Being in practice and being in a game are completely different things. You can look great in practice and not look good in a game. And as Christian Fulton told us a couple weeks ago, Game reps and confidence from coaches goes a long way to helping a defensive back establish their confidence in the league. He said that's how he got his confidence. I don't know how Caleb Farley is supposed to get his confidence or supposed to play carefree without this, without this mental blockade when he has to be thinking, if I make one mistake, I'm going straight to the bench because that's what they did when they played uh, – this past week, right? Yeah. This past week against Washington, it was, you made a mistake, sit he down. A, he let a guy that's never scored a touchdown in the NFL just run right by him for 75 yards. He was a, he, he gets paid to make plays too, right? Yeah, and but, like, and I know, I know it's not a guy with a, a huge history. Or Terrence or Mitchell, let, Terrence Mitchell let Matt Collins go for 160 and moss him like three times in the end zone. So I don't, I like, what you do on the field sometimes is bad, but this is a guy that they, I I feel so strongly about this. You have to give him the opportunity to fail and to fail and be carefree about not worrying about, well, if I make one mistake, then my career could end because I'm not going to get any more playing time because that's the box that they put him in is, Hey, Caleb, go out there and execute every single play. And, oh, by the way, if you give up a ball over your head, you're out of there and you're not getting another opportunity. Because well, he can't, because that's, that's the one thing you can't do. 
Like that's the one thing. I know it's the one thing you can't do and you can preach that to him and you can try and work with him on getting, getting that out of him at this point in time at a, a spot in his career where he's maybe played three full games of snaps. I don't think you can just bench him because he's not playing the way that you want him to play. Like that, I don't, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. So I know it's probably the minority. I know they want to win games, but this is what you did when you said we're going with a young secondary. This is what you did when you drafted a guy with an injury history in Caleb Farley. And now you have to be prepared to commit to the process to develop him. If you're not going to commit to developing your draft picks, then you're not going to have many draft picks work out, right? You can't have such a short leash on the guys that you invest in, in the, at the highest level. So Andre says, I'd rather play Farley instead of Mitchell or Trey Avery. Is Trey Avery still on the team? I don't know, but <laughs> I agree. Because I haven't heard him. <laughs> no, actually, well, I, he guess- has not gotten not, – if he is on the team, he hasn't gotten any opportunity since Buffalo. Right. Uh, that was a an experiment gone wrong where – your undrafted free agent was clearly a little bit overmatched by Stefan Diggs, but yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, Preston says, Austin, all DBs get beat. Come on. Even Christian Fulton gets beat. I look, I'm the one person that always says the nature of the cornerback position is to get beat. I feel like I say that every, almost every time we have a conversation about corners, but here's the reality. Caleb Farley has given up three plays of 39 yards or longer already in this season. One of them yeah. was a 75 yard touchdown. Another one, a deep ball against the Colts. And then he gave up a 39 year old uh, yard catch to Kudro or whatever his name is, the Buffalo bills. Caleb Farley's mistakes are so gargantuan that they crush his team. And the thing about the, the corner position that I'm very aware of, because I played it for a lot of my life is that, if you make a mistake, everybody else on defense could do their job perfectly. But if you mess up, it's seven points on your team. That's yeah. what the corner position is. And so Caleb Farley on limited snaps has given up three massive plays. And what's going to happen? If, if, he, if Caleb Farley is on the field against the Indianapolis Colts and Nissan Stadium after the bye week, and you and Matt Ryan sees that I immediately tell the fastest receiver on the Colts go, just go. I'll take the shotgun snap, backpedal as quick as I can, and heave it before Big Jeff eats my face. Like and and that's what I'm going to do because Caleb Farley shows that he has zero ability to follow the receiver and or track the football in the air down the field. Yeah, I mean, so, like, I, and so going, that's going, yeah. so Mike Vrabel cannot afford at this point in the season to have him get smoked, and and to know that the other team says, "Ooh, number three's out there. Let's go chop him up and just smoke him all over the field." Because here's the reality: Roger McCreary is is the better outside option. I feel like after the bye week, Ugo Amadi will be back healthy to play because they didn't put him on IR. So that's where I think this problem can fix itself with the health of Ugo Amadi. And then whenever the eventual return of Elijah Molden gives you more depth. So honestly, you have to bench Caleb Farley right now. He's too big of a liability. So, yeah, you say what at this point in the season, the Titans can't afford to have Caleb Farley out there. My rebut to that would be at what point in the question, at what point in the season could they afford to play Uh, Caleb Farley? Because if the answer is none, right, and if that's your answer, then you're doing exactly what I said. You're yanking the – What's the goal? What's the goal? You have a bigger goal. The team success is bigger than Caleb Farley's success. But yes, it is. But that's part of my point is you you have to, when you were committed to team success, you committed to Caleb Farley. The Titans have gone for this long-term option. Long-term, that's why the A.J. Brown trade happened to begin with because they were in this option of let's see how how much younger we can get, how much we can extend this window. And they're relying on some of those guys. And Caleb Farley is one of those guys. And if you're doing this now, 
I think a leash of a first round pick, like you can only say, oh, he's a first round pick for so long. He's played three games worth of snaps in his career. He, that leash has not run out yet. And I do believe you have an obligation to a first round draft pick that you invested in and that you brought in to try and develop him to the best of your ability, Sam. because that is what's best for the team Sam. long term. Terrence Sam. Mitchell is not. Sam, Mike Vrabel has an obligation to his football team. I agree. Not lose I agree. Games. The, and the obligation to the team is bigger than the obligation to Caleb Farley. That's yeah. the situation. Also, also D good. D good says, Austin, comparing yourself to an NFL player is asinine. D good. It's asinine for you to think that I said that and compared myself to an NFL player. You've got to be so dense to think what I said was me comparing myself to Caleb Farley. No, I just said I've played the position. I understand a little bit of the pressure of playing corner. That's the point there. D good. Good Lord. Get better. Be better than that. D good. That's awful. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, and that that is why I believe it's a lose-lose overall, is you do have an obligation to try and win games, and there is a balance of trying to put the best team on the field. But to not give them opportunity, it does not feel like the correct process to me because part of trying to win these games and part of trying to be uh, establish a culture is establishing something that is sustainable and establishing a culture of opportunity and development and growing from within. The Titans have been eaten alive this season by not bail not having success from a lot of their draft picks, right? You have to draft well. You have to develop well. Yeah, and uh, when I, I think it will hurt Caleb Farley's development to not play, at least right now. There is the argument, Elijah Molden gets back. McCreary, Molden, and Fulton are your best three, and they're significantly your best three. Yeah. Where I, I can see that a hundred percent being, you know, a realistic thing, and I think Farley could be a good matchup in the red zone on size or empty sets and different different looks. Right now, which is how I'm looking at it, because I look at the remainder of that Commanders game where I didn't feel like they had a substantially better option. Develop your guy, and, and that's what it comes down to for me: is develop your guy, unless somebody else is proving this is much more fruitful in terms of winning football games. Yeah. And I get my whole point of the corner and back thing is that I feel like you have to understand and be realistic with expectations for corners. Like you expect your quarterbacks in football to complete close to 70% of their passes, which means that corners are going to give up completions. And so the, but the one thing you can't do is get beat over the top. That that breaks open games. It beats you. You lose football games because you get beat over the top. And Caleb Farley has showed that he doesn't know what to do. He freaks out when the ball is in the air 40 yards down the field. Like, that's what happens. He I doesn't know what to do. But I think part of that is him getting benched. Like, I think part of that is... So the short leash he's on. He, but he didn't. He didn't start bench. They started him against Washington. Yeah, and then he right. got. Then he gave up a seventy-five yard touchdown. Look, look how many how many long touchdowns has he given up? Two, right? Which is is two too many, and is it is. I think, it's just, I think it's just the one, or just the one long touchdown. Another deep ball, right? One yeah. other deep, really two deep other deep balls. balls. Well, two deep uh, balls. what was the yardage you gave? Uh, one was thirty-nine to the. Uh, Kudro to the Bills. Okay. And then the other was 40 plus uh, against the Colts. Okay. So when he basically long... just stopped, remember that it was in the, it was a deep ball in the air. That was a weird play though, because the, it was an underthrown football and he's got to do a better job of tracking the football. That's, but he, that's the point. He didn't get beat over the top. He just, he just lost sight of the ball. Well, he did. He just, again, he can't track the football. He's showing us that he can't stick with a guy or track the football when it's in the air. Look, he freaks out. He's done a lot of good things outside of those plays in terms of his ability to, to close to the football, in terms of tackling, in terms of being physical on his matchups. I think a first-round draft pick needs to be afforded more opportunity than three plays. Because that 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 is what it comes down to. If you're ending Caleb Farley's opportunity in the Titans' defense – is you had a first round draft pick that had injury issues his rookie year. You stuck him out here his his second season. 
And now you're taking away his opportunity because of three plays. I think you have, you need to commit to that guy more. That's just where I, and I, I, like I said, I know I'm in the minority on that. I know it's probably uh, going to be worse off for them immediately, but I think in the long run, getting Caleb Farley's confidence back and allowing him to grow will be what's best for the Titans Titans and the Titans defense in the future. That's just yeah. my opinion on it. And, and then you have, uh, some, you know, did Farley not practice his offseason? Now, that's the weird thing about this is because he was the starter all training camp. And Sam, we were there. He was the starter back in May and June when he was wearing the non-contact jersey uh, coming yeah. off the ACL. He took so many reps uh, with the first team defense outside and then it just, it's like a mental block. I, I don't know. It, it's a weird situation uh, for sure. All right. Uh, do you want to go ahead and get to, get to shade here? Yep. Let's throw some shade here on our, every Wednesday show. We throw shade at the very end of the show. But real quick, let me tell you guys about Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get better with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Uh, they can give you better service rates and coverage. When you go to fbhp.com slash ATOZ, for your health plan, health, dental, vision, they got you there. They've covered Tennesseans for now over 75 years across the entire state. The very west corners, the very east corners, north and south, they've got Tennessee covered right there. And you can save money. Like Zach Bingham signed up in January, and he's loving it because he saved over 20% per month on his health coverage with Farm Bureau Health Plans. You guys can do the same. Join the Farm Bureau Health Plans family, fbhp.com slash ATOZ. We are powered today by BetMGM, the king of sports books. I'm going to hit you with it one more time today because I can't say it enough. A risk-free bet on pro football up to $1,000. That is an opportunity that is too good to pass up. So don't pass it up. Use the promo code A. TOZ Sports while you're on the BetMGM app or betmgm.com. And whatever bet you place on pro football with that promo code becomes risk free up to $1,000. So that is a perfect opportunity. Get two chances at it. Get involved. BetMGM, the king of sports books. I've on this Wednesday, sorry, my computer's being really freaking weird today. I don't know what is going on uh, with my computer uh, anyway, but I'll have to do a hard reset. But all right, Sam, uh, throwing shade here on the show. Uh, we'll go to shade. Do you want to uh, do your shade first? Yeah, I mean, my mine's pretty simple. It, it was a tough Tough day for me yesterday, and I I mentioned Bet MGM all show today. I I got to throw shade at the Seattle Mariners uh, and Scott Service and Robbie Ray. They blew a four run lead to Houston in the playoffs and gave up a walk off home run. They brought in a starting pitcher. They brought in a starting pitcher to close the game and get the last out, and then he immediately gave up a three run home run. They lost the game. And I had a $300 parlay just riding. All I needed was the Mariners to come through and win the game for me. It was a $300 payout on BetMGM, courtesy of BetMGM. And the Mariners went and blew it for me. So I'm not happy. I love Seattle and I love the Mariners right now. I'm riding with them in playoff baseball. I'm not happy with them. And it hurts a little bit that it was to Houston too. They're not my favorite. So yeah, I'm throwing big shade at them because – they added a lot of stress to my uh, my Tuesday evening, made me a little bit upset and lost me some money in the process. So, yeah, I, shade, 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 shame on the Seattle Mariners for yesterday. Yeah, uh, G-Man says shade on the peeps that won't hit the like button on YouTube. There's a Agreed. lot of people in here on only 12 likes. Guys, all right, real quick. If you're watching on your phone on YouTube, I get it, G-Man. I'm with you. I appreciate you bringing this up. So you have to hit exit on the live chat <clears throat> for the live chat to go away. Then you hit the live, the like button. Then you hit the live chat. The chat pops back up. So that's a YouTube thing where the chat covers up the like button. So it, yeah, like the show before you go do that. Absolutely. Cause uh, if you're here watching the show, like a lot of you guys are, you should absolutely like the show while you're at it. Noah says, change the whole NASCAR playoff look. I don't even know what that means. Uh, but I mean, that might there. be a shade if they change the, or unless yeah. he's responding to somebody else. So. I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael says shade at CBS for making him listen to Gary Danielson. I'd rather listen to a rusty box fan covered in baseball cards than four hours of straight Alabama butt kissery. 
Yeah, Gary Danielson's not very good anymore at what he does. Um, he's basically the college football's Chris Collinsworth, in my oh, opinion. Good. Don't get me started on Chris Collinsworth. That's fine. Man. That's yeah. fine. Uh, uh, Alonzo uh, says, shade on the Titans for not firing Todd Downing, yet it's only going to get worse as the offensive coordinator. Todd Downing hasn't been bad uh, over the last few games, in my opinion. Uh, look, I mean, some of you guys are trying to bait me into your shade. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, Steven says shade all over Jerome Boger's ridiculous roughing the passer call in Atlanta. And Lane says shade on judgmental penalties. The refs were doing great this year and lately just trash. That's where my shade is, is that it's on the NFL refs for just completely botching the whole intent of roughing the passer. It's not that hard. It's it, yeah. really not that hard. And I thought Chris Jones, after the Monday night football game this week between the Chiefs and the Raiders, Chris Jones got called for a rough in the passer for having his body weight fall on Derek Carr. And Chris Jones said this in the post game after a win. So he was a lot more calm than maybe if that cost the Chiefs the game. But he said what well, should absolutely, absolutely be the case. They should review rough in the passer penalties. Yeah. They should treat rough in the passer kind of like targeting calls in college football. Now, don't get me wrong. I think targeting calls in college football, the ejection of a player is a super severe punishment uh, for a college athlete. But I understand the point of it. But it, with that big of a punishment on a college player, having it be reviewed so that guy doesn't get immediately um, ejected is a good thing. They should be able to review roughing the passer if this is what they're going to do. If they're gonna be this ridiculous, then they should review it. Yeah, I mean the 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 pass interference review didn't exactly go well. People started getting upset as soon as they implemented that. But uh, I do agree with you. It's better to get it right. Uh, I think the bigger issue is just take away take away the rule that you can't land on a quarterback with your body weight. That whole thing was put into place when Aaron Rodgers hurt his collarbone on like when he got landed on the one time, it's a yeah. dumb rule. How are you supposed like you're telling people to tackle where they can't swing a guy to the ground and they can't fall on top of them. It, it is a wild, 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 pr like standard for what pass interference or uh, roughing the passer is rather nowadays take away the rule. And, and if you want to review it, review it. But I don't think it's going to change unless you really just look at the definition in the rule book and make some changes to it. Yeah. I really do think it should be reviewed. Um, and, and, and Johnny says, why don't they eject in the NFL for targeting? Well, I think it's a good question. Um, in the NFL, you're limited with 46, game day players. Like if you eject somebody, you're really putting a team in a tough spot. And so in college football, if a team is playing at home, they might have a hundred guys in uniform, you know, so you can just throw somebody else in there. Uh, and then in the NFL, they fine. So you can find players who are pros and be getting game checks and they don't want people messing with their money. So that's it. The ejection is kind of the fine that they do after the fact, whether it's a penalty called in the game or not. Yeah, no, totally agree. Let's get to more shade here. Does anybody else have a good shade? Uh, shade on Charlie Burris and Big Orange Podcast for putting out a clickbaiting YouTube videos like is Tennessee, I don't know what that word is. Wide receiver let, you. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm going to let you respond to that. because Yeah, this I is know Big Ten Jeff fun. being a soft uh, uh, you know, Ohio State fan. Like Tennessee was once wide receiver you. Back in the 80s, 90s, Tennessee was considered wide receiver you. So the thought is, and it's a topic, it's not clickbait, it's a topic. And it's their opinion on having a conversation about a topic. That's not clickbait, Jeff. It's a topic that they're having a conversation about. How hard is that for people to understand? And do they have the best offense in the league or in the, in the country? Maybe. I mean, they just hung 40 points on LSU and honestly – they kind of had a bad day. <laughs> like they had a bad day and they scored 40 at LSU. So do they have the one of the best offenses in the league? Yes. But yeah. I mean, it's they're having a conversation about a topic, Jeff. 
I knew what I was doing pinning that. I knew that would get you going a little bit. I just wanted to let you uh, let you go off here. Justin's throwing shade at me for betting on the Astros. Daniel's doing the exact same thing. I will take that shade because uh, I know we might have some Astros fans. I'm not a Houston Astros guy. I have some some negative feelings towards them still. And that was even heightened last year because they beat my White Sox in the playoffs, which I'm still bitter about. So I will take the shade. Well, Sam, I think probably, you know, hit the button wrong. So Sam's gone. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And here he comes. I don't Dude, know what happened. Where'd you go? Well, I don't know. I think I accidentally backed out of the thing on my computer. That was tough. We're back. Oh, Woo. God. But more, more, look, uh, Jeff says, so it is clickbait. No, it's not clickbait. It's what do you, what do you want the title? That You can't have a full conversation in a title of a YouTube video. Jeff, that's not how it works. That's a good comment from Nick. Sam got benched like Farley. Yeah. And I, then and then everybody's saying that LSU is trash. LSU's offense is garbage. LSU's defense is pretty good. And they've got really good players on defense. My point was Tennessee only scored 40 points when they left a lot more points out there, but they scored 40 on a good SEC defense. Last one I'm going to get to, uh, Shade on Technology. Yeah, Shade on Technology. What the heck was that, Apple? What are we I doing? I don't know, and my computer's been acting weird all day. Big time technology's on the hot seat today for from A to Z for sure. Uh, but, yeah. Sorry for getting you all riled up there with that comment from Jeff. I just I thought I'd give you an opportunity Swing to- Swing uh, screen. Dude, listen to what I'm saying, man. LSU's defense is good. LSU's offense is garbage. What are you talking about? How, I don't, I don't get people. I don't get people. I'm enjoying this. I'm just, I'm sitting back in like my the chair. Swing I'm stream, a- an absolute buffoon. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I don't think LSU has a good team. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. Their offense is garbage. They have good players. They have talented players, but it's not working right now with, uh, Brian Kelly, the defense. Yes, it is good. The defense did a pretty good job overall. Uh, and they have really good players. They've got first round draft picks. They've got talent. They've got four star and five star guys on that defense. And they've done a pretty good job overall this season until they met Tennessee. And honestly, they did a good job against Tennessee because they forced Tennessee to kick like four field goals. Forcing Tennessee to kick four field goals is pretty good, especially when your offense sucks and puts them in bad spots. And Valentino says, put up 40 on Bama then. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out what happens. Yeah, we will. All right. Well, hey. Thank you. B-Bird says it's called selective listening. Yeah, people just pick and choose individual words to create their own sentence. Well, yeah, I I kind of knew what I was doing there. You got all fired up. This is good. This is this is why this is why Tennessee undefeated going into Bama is a good thing because we get to, we get to get fired up about it a little bit and we will uh, we will find out a lot about uh, how good Tennessee is uh, yeah and and thank you Greg uh, because this happens all the time everybody thought Pittsburgh was good everybody was calling Anthony Richardson a Heisman candidate after one game and thought Florida was good LSU you know that you know they beat Auburn barely to get ranked so that helps Tennessee but now Tennessee beats them all and everybody's downplaying that because people don't want Tennessee to be good that's the reality people don't want Tennessee to be good they try to do it all the time. Pick apart and dissect why Tennessee's not as good as they should be. So again, we'll find out against Alabama. I have no idea how it's going to go. No clue. No clue. But I don't think Tennessee's going to win against Alabama. But I, I do know Tennessee has a good football team. That's true. That much is true. Uh yeah, I don't have much to say on that. But you, I think you handled it all pretty So good. you trolled me there, right? I trolled you earlier in the week. Um, on Monday when I asked you and got you riled up about math. So we're, we're even, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, the, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, know, I'm, I'm trying that. to block that person. There, you're good. <laughs> I got it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that you like to uh, be able to defend yourself when you see see some of those comments coming in. And then I, I knew it would get you going a little bit, especially because it had to do with Tennessee. And we all know Tennessee fans can be very, very, uh, 
uh, get get a little defensive at times here, especially when they're good. They want they want the approval of the rest of the college football world. Then let me just say they'll get it uh, on Saturday if they can uh, if they can knock off the tide. Then there won't be any more conversation to have. But uh, just a yeah, I just thought it was funny. That's all. I just don't like when people take my words and put them in a blender yeah. and then choose the ones they want to. No, I get that. that that's yeah, frustrating. That's- I mean, that's I'll, t- I'll tell you this. We, that math conversation still has me rattled. I argue, <laughs> I no, Austin, I argued with my girlfriend like in the car for uh, like two hours yesterday. Cause she was trying to tell me that we discovered math and I oh, parked man. the car and it was like two hours later. And I was like, I don't think we should talk about this anymore. <laughs> it was, it, it was, <laughs> I'm still on edge. So I had to, I had to get you back with a little bit of it, get you fired up because yeah, yeah you, you rocked my whole week with, with some of those questions from that Monday. was so funny. That was just, if you want to go back to Monday's show, like uh, almost an hour in Sam was just, just battling the entire chat about math being invented, not being discovered. Yeah. Hilarious. It got you worked up. I'm glad. Uh, I hope your relationship's going to be able to. Oh, well, yeah. That, hey, that debate much bigger than math. It was just, uh, it it was a, it was a funny moment where I'm like, man, Austin has got me out here affecting my personal life. I'm out like (laughs) using my, all my free time to just argue about the stuff from the show. It's, it it was, yeah, it was wild. Roy says God made math, Sam. Come on. You should know that. That's true. I agree with that. (laughs) All right. Uh, that's it. That's all we've got for this, uh, Wednesday show again. Like the show before you go. Thanks to uh, G-Man for telling everybody on YouTube they need to like the show. So uh, hide the chat, like the show, then you can read, click on the chat. But uh, like the show before you go. Uh, Buck Rising, not live tonight. It is the bye week. Uh, so prime time is off, but he does have a, a short video that will come out later on tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. And Sam and Zach will see you guys tomorrow morning. I'm off for the week. And we'll talk to you guys later later on. Have a good one. Appreciate it as always.